I have an E46 convertible that's getting water in the trunk. You can see water's in here, and water fills the battery box over here. It's wet in the partition in the back. And water, you can see, sometimes strips right from the fold-down fold down partition for the convertible top. So what is happening is there's some drains under the frame of the convertible top and I'll show you that location and they clog. You know, I just realized I should add some tips and tricks at the end. In order to do this, I leave the engine running and you open up the top just enough so that the back parcel shelf opens and then you stop. Now, if you shut the car off, the system's gonna depressurize because it is hydraulic and then it's going to come down and move on and fall on you. So I usually leave it running leave this flashing. Problem is when you're in this position, you'll have a limited amount of time before the system will depressurize anyways. It's about five to 10 minutes. Um, so every five minutes of trying to do a side, what you should do is hop back in the car, which is nice and simple. Just hop back in and hold the brake, and just move it slightly, and then it will repressurize and give you that time that you need. So you need to open the top to this position so the rear panel is up and check in here at this mechanism linkage. There's a drain underneath this base plate. So what you need to do is spray some water and verify that the drain is draining. And looking here you can see standing water so this side is not draining on the right side. And what happens is the water runs back and there's all these cavities and also this cover right here for the partition, water can get right through there and into the trunk. So this side is dry. Let's see if we have standing water. This could also drain, you have a drain on each side. Yep, it's not draining. All right, both sides are clogged. It took me a while to find it. I'm using a borescope and I'm down inside underneath this cavity and I finally found the drain and there it is right there. And you can see that it's full of debris. So now I need to get my special tool and you can see right there it's all full of stuff and be able to follow my borescope down to this drain hole to clean it out. All right, so here's a special tool. Cut a coat hanger and just bend the end over. And you should need to dial in the angle to get to that uh, drain hole. All right, the drain is all the way up under here. So there's my borescope and here's the tool going in and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this too well, but I can see where my tool is. And now I have to clean out this area. So there's the drain. And you can see there's just tons of stuff on top of it. Alright, so I just had it right there. You have to find the drain and clean out the stuff that's in there and then you can try to flush it back down. So if you don't have a borescope, if you get your angle, slide it in to the side of the inner bolt and just with the press turning it slightly so there's a little bit of pressure. A lot of times you can reach in, drag it back slowly, and catch the drain. Actually, I'd already caught it because it just drained. The only thing you won't know is if you got all the debris out. But you can flush it with the water. But basically, this would be a way for you to do this without using a borescope. Just get a slight angle. All right, here's the inner. Slide it in. Make sure, and I filled it with water so I know when I hit it. And just gently drag back, go in, and once you, you actually catch the, the hole 
where the drain is. Right there, I just caught it. All right, and then just try to wiggle it back and forth, leave it in. Take your water. And you should get a nice gurgling sound. You know, maybe try to do this once a season. Just double check and make sure that these drains are draining. It can get very expensive if water will fill up this cavity. If you're facing down, if your engine is facing down, the water will actually enter the cabin, get under the carpets, and can damage some very expensive modules. Also in the trunk, it can get into K-Bus connections, amplifiers, um, CD changers, and wiring, and cause some K-Bus problems in general, and it could get expensive. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you can see how to do this without having to use a borescope. I'm going to just verify with a borescope that these both are nice and clean. Again, thanks for watching. You know, I know I thought I said uh, goodbye and everything and thanks for watching, but uh, I forgot about all the repercussions of this leak. So I just pulled the trunk panels out and uh, of course there's standing water here water in the side panel they just these push clips just lift up and the battery box is full of water and if you leave this it's going to cause some major damage so and then here this is a K bus splice for um, this power ground and then there's a either it's I or a K bus and this can corrode especially since it is soaking wet this is going to take down everything in your car that's on your inf infotainment um, the instrument cluster can come down, the heater control panel will come down, and this can cause some major headaches. So you want to make sure that you unwrap this, check these connections here, because this is going to just fester, and then they're going to short out. And usually they rust and then short out against each other, and you can have a, a short depositive here, and your, there's your K-cans place right there, the white with the yellow and the red and then there's your power and ground. So you wanna make sure that these are dry. So you wanna dry that out. I mean, you can let this sit out to dry. And I got all this stuff out here. This is an M car, so the uh, entire inflation system was basically underwater. This is, there was water in here. I don't think this is gonna work anymore. Um, there was a relay in the back, a nice rusted relay. That's no good. And I pulled this panel out and this back one because that was soaking wet. So I'm going to pull the battery out, obviously. And there's a there's a metal tray that this battery sits in, which is kind of a pain also. It has these joints in it that you have to pop out. So negative cable, always disconnect the negative cable first, then the positive. And I'm going to take this apart and suck this out. All right, you have to take the battery out. Obviously negative cable, it's a 10 millimeter. Take that one off first. The positive would be right here. 10 also, take that out of your way. You have a hole down, which I have here, which is also a 10. And then this actually sits on the side of the battery like so. Take that hole down off. That's actually right here-ish on this side. And then you need a T40. You have to take out the T40 down here. Now with the T40 out, you're still stuck because this box doesn't come out because it's held by these sockets, these ball sockets. So get a pry bar and pop them out like so and free them so you can take this box out. The hardest one is the one down here. And it's also the hardest one to pop back on, just because of the angle. Let's see if I can get this one. On this edge with a small pry bar, I'm gonna catch it right here, like that, and pop it free. Right there. I think. There we go. Okay, little twist. Now I can pull this whole box out. I actually found the o-ring for this piece here. The way that this works is take the bolt, 
that's your hole down. Let's exit. Sit it up and then put this O ring over that. That holds it in place when you slide it in. Like so. That way when you slide it in, you don't lose that piece. So now I have standing water here that I need to get out. All right, there's some pillars in here that are also T40s, which you need to unscrew. See right there? They, they're in like the bracket that holds up the other battery housing, or battery holder. So you need to unscrew these, I already loosened them. Because if you don't take this out, you're going to have water trapped underneath and you're never going to get it all out. It's just going to rust in here. Take that out. That's got to dry. And now, now I need to get this water out. And I do not think there's a body plug here where you can cheat and, and just have it go through. You actually have to vacuum it out with a shop vac. Yuck. All right, tighten all those, and then the next piece is the main battery tray. Just make sure that the vent for the battery is out of the way when you put it in. All right, because everything had some corrosion, I threw some anti seize on the threads with these because there already was some corrosion. That'll just help prevent those from seizing. Okay, I'm gonna snug these down. Alright, we're gonna install these ball sockets and see if you give them a push, hard push, you can sometimes get them to pop in. Same thing with this one down here. I'm going to use a tool. I think it's down there. Try a screwdriver. That was too big. There we go. Just give them a push. Pop them into place. Alright, now we're about ready for putting the battery in. Alright, drop the battery in. Find your vent. Make sure your vent is attached or corrosion can build up from the gases from your battery when it charges. Always connect the positive first. Slug that down. Then your negative. Before we put that on, I'm going to put the hole down on. Alright, here's my hole down with my washer, and you can see this is the way it goes. Uh, this lip actually faces upwards, not downwards, and you can see that little triangle right there that slides down that way. I'm going to put some NACs on that as well. Right, I'm slide this down. found this the battery wasn't installed right. That bracket was underneath the battery. That's not how it goes. The battery would not be secure. This is the hole down for the battery. Just gently snug that. Alright, that's solid. Now, go ahead and put your negative cable on. Then you can just put your covers on. That's all your brackets. Yep, and then just install the panels and the push pins. Nice and easy. Well, I hope this additional information is helpful. Thanks for watching, and uh, likes and positive comments are appreciated.